I'd be kind of surprised if you hadn't heard the old expression, with friends like these, who needs enemies? Sometimes there's more to that old saw than we might be inclined to think. Hello and welcome to the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt. Today is Tuesday, the 12th of January of 2021. Welcome to everybody who's here on Rumble, on the podcast, and on YouTube. And the subject, as I say, of our little talk today is friends like these. And I wanted to talk, take some time and talk about some things that have happened recently that I think a lot of people are very well aware of. Uh, one excellent example of that is things that have happened in election situations. I wanted to start by saying that I don't know how much, if any, fraud occurred in the 2020 presidential election. I don't know. Can't answer that. Okay. And I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that I expect others, particularly people who are well known, to go around saying, oh, there was fraud, there was fraud. On the other hand, I don't expect them to do the opposite either. I do not expect them to say, no, there was definitely no fraud or there seems to be nothing that indicates that there was fraud to me. Okay. I guess what I'm saying is this. When you have people out there who are voicing their opinions to a national audience of potentially millions of people, whether they're politicians or talking heads, pundits, whatever you want to call them, okay, and when they say things like, I've seen no evidence of fraud, I have to say to those particular individuals, you really are the epitome of the idea with friends like you who needs enemies. Here's the thing. Do I know there was fraud? No. Do I have proof that there was fraud? No. Do I suspect that there was fraud? Yes. Do I suspect that it was large scale in nature? Yes, I do. I'm not trying to sit here and say that I know that the fraud existed, but I'll tell you this. If I'm not in charge of the election systems, it's darn hard for me to say whether it was or it wasn't, and the election processes for that matter. It's darn hard for me to say whether it was or it wasn't, and that's why investigation is nece war was necessary. It wasn't necessary because people could prove fraud. It was necessary in order to assuage fears that fraud existed or occurred. If you run around saying, and this is the real point, if you run around saying, I see no evidence of fraud, my response to you is, yeah, neither do I, and neither will you unless we can get into certain systems and see what actually happened or is happening there. You're not going to see the evidence of fraud. It's a ridiculous thing to assume that a case is, uh, requires a, pr a preponderance of evidence to be heard. Okay? When a case occurs where you're trying to determine a particular thing. What actually happens is fact-finding occurs in the case. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that there are situations where there were questions about venue and so, so forth. In my personal opinion, the, uh, there was judicial malfeasance in that case because if nothing else, the people who put up the arguments that this is not my jurisdiction or whatever should have then stated this is the jurisdiction to whom you need to submit this. Go, 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 do it now because it has to be done. It's, it's time expedient. It, it must be done now, right? But, but the thing is to just say, I'm not going to hear your case when you are the authority for that case and to use things like lack of standing and to use things like, uh, um, I don't believe there was widespread fraud, fraud and therefore I'm not going to take the case. How do you know if there's widespread fraud if you haven't done any sort of fact-finding to determine whether or not that's the case? It's not that it's the job of the courts to do the fact-finding, but it's that it's the job of the courts to review the facts that have been found and to allow for various kinds of activities to occur that may unearth more facts. And in my mind, these things didn't happen. My problem, though, today is that I believe that there were a lot of people out there who had the opportunity to report on this and say, look, you know, I don't tend to believe there's any kind of fraud. But here's the thing. If I want for my fellow citizens to feel like they were a part of a fair election, then we should look at the things that they're talking about 
And if we find nothing, we find nothing, and there's nothing to lose. I grant you in that case, you can argue that technically there was nothing to, there's nothing to gain if, if they don't find fraud. But you know what? The only way you're going to find that, wh out whether or not there was anything to gain or anything to lose is by actually looking into things. And if you're talking about that on a national level and you're saying things like, um, no, I don't believe there was any fraud. Who cares what you think? You say who cares what uh, the preponderance of the American public thinks. But my question is, who cares what you think? You're a talking head or a politician or whatever. Who cares what you think? The question is not what you think. It is what the courts are doing. And in my opinion, at this point, there is malfeasance, there is error, there is arrogance, and there is ignorance on the part of the court with regard to this. And by the way, that may also be true with state legislatures and various other bodies that should be looking into this sort of thing as well. Path going forward is pretty obvious as far as I'm concerned. We ought to make sure that it is not possible for the kinds of fraud that I believe have occurred in the current election, and I do believe that they have, but I can't prove it, so I'm not going to tell you that I know that it's true. Um, but the point is, the path going forward is to make it so that that type of fraud is not um, possible. But I'm going to give you another path. If you're the kind of person who's just going to ignore the fact that the courts and the legislatures of the several states that might have been involved in fraud, uh, if you're just going to ignore the fact that those entities didn't do their jobs, I'm going to pretty much cut you loose too. I just want you to know that. I listen to you and I listen to you because in general, I think you have something to say that will help me to understand situations better. When you start saying things and I'm spending a lot of my time yelling at you going, uh, no, and I don't mean necessarily physically yelling, though I don't see anything necessarily wrong with that, right? But the point is, if I'm spending more of my time looking at you and shaking my head than I am listening to you and going, yep, I see what you're saying, and maybe even disagree with, you know, or, or uh, have my mind changed, right? If, but if I'm going to spend more of my time shaking my head and going, no, you're just absolutely wrong about that, and and with no recourse to get you to reconsider what it is that you're doing or saying, the chances are pretty good I'm just going to, you know, wish you a, a fine life and move on. And you need to understand that. If you are a talking head, if you're on the radio, if you're on TV, if you're on YouTube or Rumble, if you're doing a podcast, whatever it happens to be, and you're saying things like, I don't believe in malfeasance or, or uh, incorrect vote act, voting activities and so forth, and therefore I don't see any problem with what the courts have done, I have to tell you that the chances are pretty good you're, you've lost a good deal of my respect. I'm just telling you that. And if you think I'm alone in that, watch and see what happens to your subscription numbers. Maybe I am. But the way to find out is going to be to look at how many people are looking at you and how many people you lose. I get it. Sometimes people do that out of spite. Sometimes do it, people do it out of a lack of information, understanding, or knowledge. Sometimes you're correct and they don't want to hear it. But the truth of the matter is, when you lose large amounts of numbers of followers because you refuse to realize that people were trying to say things that were actually valid, I hate to say this, but that's pretty much on you. That's pretty much how that works. So, just so that you understand, this is what the expression with friends like these who needs enemies was more or less made for. There's people who are acting like you are at this point in time when you do things like that. And now, this is just an example. There are other things that have made me kind of tune out or turn off various people at various points along the way. This is just an example of that, and it happens to people on all fronts. It just so happens in this case I'm talking about people who would be considered conservative talkers and politicians, and I'm saying that you didn't have the either you didn't have the intestinal fortitude, or you didn't have the knowledge, or you didn't understand nuances of things that were going on that made them what they were. But with friends like you at this point, I don't need enemies. Sorry to tell you that, but that's the reality. Okay. I am running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. As I say, today is the uh, 12th, and it is Tuesday, the, uh, the 12th of January of 2021, and it is Tuesday, and I'm glad to have you aboard today. Um, I'm happy to, to talk to whoever is willing to listen, and by the way, I'm always willing to hear 
what you think about what I'm saying. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Wednesday, the 13th of January, 2021. I'm going to try and get another daily summation out then. Uh, I hope you're having a good day. We're coming up on the middle of the week, obviously. We're not quite there yet, but we're rolling in that direction slowly and steadily. And hopefully you are doing well. And hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Tuesday, the 12th of January of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional and maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurtz Religion and Politics as well, I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with a with an s dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the daily summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.